Hi, how are you? I'm seriously asking that question. I feel like I need to ask that question right now. How are you doing? How are you coping? How are you feeling? I don't know what it is about today, but I actually woke up feeling great. <laughs> I don't know. It. I think the sun here in Texas has been out in force the last like week. I've been getting back out and in my garage and lifting some weights and just trying to pretend like I didn't spend the last 50 days eating sugar and terrible foods while lounging around on my couch playing Animal Crossing and not working out at all. You know, that didn't happen. I don't know. Today I'm feeling pretty great, but I think it's a question that's important to ask. How are you? Now that that's out of the way, I am feeling pretty good, pretty great. So I want to spread some of that positivity from me through this microphone and camera into your brains and hopefully make you feel a little better too. Because there's a lot of really cool things happening right now in the world of gaming and you kind of have to scrounge around for it. You have to look for it because again, the situation we're in, everything is pretty quiet. But if you look for things, you can find them. And even in the places that are, are kind of negative, that kind of sucky in amongst all the the leaks and, and negativity and disappointment, I still think that there are ways to find positivity in those things, to, to look on the bright side of those situations and be hopeful, because I don't think we should all be in despair and dismay and just accept that things are the way they are and there's no... <laughs> so today is all about fun, lighthearted positivity. Let's start with some fun stuff, because May may not be as boring as you think it may be. Okay, I'll stop that. <laughs> we have a, a bunch of games coming out this month that didn't get delayed uh, yet. And I want to go through those because let's get excited for new games. Actually, and I know I focus on Switch, but this month is pretty good for Switch. <laughs> Everywhere else a little quiet. So starting uh, May 12th, actually, in just a few days, Star Wars Episode 1, I'm gonna stop clapping right into the microphone, Pod Racer. I love this game. I, I have memories playing this game as a little youngin' on my N64. And then, starting late this month, we have a bunch of games coming out. There's actually a lot more than this too, I've just picked the ones that interest me, my bad. <laughs> Saints Row the 3rd Remastered on May 22nd. The Wonderful 101 Remastered on May 22nd as well. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons. I don't know about y'all. Dungeons actually looks pretty fun. That Ninjala game that nobody actually got to beta test recently comes out May 27th. Bioshock, Borderlands, and XCOM. All of those were announced at the same time recently and they're all dropping the same day, May 29th. A bunch of 2K games. I'm actually really excited for all of those. I'm playing Gears Tactics right now and having a lot of fun with that. That's actually really good. And then of course, the biggest game of the month, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on May 29th. And then, uh, for anyone that, <laughs> that might care, Fast and the Furious Crossroads was supposed to come out this month. It's still to be confirmed, but it was supposed to be May. That game... I, okay, looking on the positive side... I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, it comes out this month. Maybe. But I know a lot of you are thinking, I, I'm bored now. I'm bored today, Woody Wooderson. Well... <laughs> Don't call me that. Well, I've got I've got an answer for you. Nintendo has just been given out games for dimes and nickels they've been giving away their games. So go to eShop, go to your great deal section, and immediately you'll th you'll see the, the, the prices here. Wait, I don't even know what a lot of these games are, but this one's 98% off. Quest for the Golden Duck is 99% off. It's seven cents down from $10. Maybe those don't impress you, but we have been seeing sales like this across the board. Hello Neighbor, a game I don't particularly love, is 75% off. Harry Potter Collection, 60% off. Street Basketball, eh, it's like half price on Assassin's Creed. You can go bowling? <laughs> Indivisible, actually that's a weird story. That just released, it's already 20% off. The developer of that game, the guy that made the game, was surprised when it released on the eShop because it wasn't supposed to. Just woke up one morning to people congratulating him about his game being on Switch and he was like, oh, so this would be a great game to check out and if you like it, support it. I actually haven't bought it yet, uh, my bad, but I do plan on it. I haven't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish games. We got, we got this game for four cents? It's a four cent game. So I don't know, I'm not gonna go through all of these uh, right now or else that'll be the whole freaking video. 
but you can already see just half price, 80%, 90%. I know a lot of them, okay, they might not look good, but I guess that's a good sign than any to stop. But South Park was, again, 75% off, so go and check it out. Always look at that great deal tab. I actually check it every day to see if there's something I don't already have, so go do it. And, okay, <laughs> the very last good vibe I want to put out there into the world. I feel like... Nobody does shout outs anymore on YouTube. Nobody get I think it's just because it's so risky to shout a channel out these days because you never know what a channel has done in the past or what they might do in the future. And if you shout them out and they turn out to be like it's just the age we live in where you gotta be careful who you promote if you don't really, really know them. But screw that. <laughs> I'm taking a gamble. I just wanna I just wanna share it because I feel like a lot of you would enjoy it. I watched one Breath of the Wild mod video, and now all YouTube wants to recommend me is Breath of the Wild mod videos. I, but they're really interesting, and I watched one this morning from Point Crow. Breath of the Wild, but the floor is lava. And he did this in the craziest ways I've seen. I don't know how people figured this stuff out. The way he like, he has to angle, he has to land on the arm of the goblin thing, I can never pronounce it, and it projects him up into the sky. He's trying to get to that tower all the way out there and to do it He has to do this like bomb trick where he drops two bombs He flips them and he screwed that one up and he laughs about it But when he does it right it looks like that and he gets an insane amount of height And then he eats a bunch of stamina stuff to give him even more stamina to be able to make it to this freaking tower This is a 40 minute video and I sat here watching the entire thing. It's so it, he, he's really positive in the video watching him Try and get to all of these towers without touching the floor with these crazy insane tricks It's not exactly a mod video, but that is what he does on his channel anyway you can go, I'll leave a link down below if you want to. That's my little shout out of the day because I find it incredibly interesting watching him break Zelda in a way it's not supposed to be broken. Let's get in to the uh, gaming news part of this video. Oh, by the way, if you like whatever this video is, to start with, subscribe. But I'm already, I can already feel like I'm enjoying this video. This weird like roundup of like sales and shouting out a channel and then going into news. I'd love, I could do this once a month at the start of the month. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, and uh, <laughs> my video yesterday legitimately did not get sent out because just of the kind of video it was. You missed it, go watch it. I'd appreciate it. It was a really fun video. Okay, first up. We had Xbox's Series X event. Half the time I can't be bothered talking about Xbox and Microsoft because I, I don't know. I'm really excited for the new Xbox. I am actually a pretty big Xbox fan, as a lot of you might know. It's not something I talk about much because just flat out, people don't really care. I feel like up until now, Microsoft has done a really, really great job at promoting and building up the Series X. I feel like this has been a complete counter flip to when they were promoting and building up the Xbox One. I actually felt really good about this new console and really good about Microsoft's position in the gaming industry. Like I really felt like, oh, they could actually make a comeback here. This could be their Wii U to Switch moment. And, and, and I, I don't actually feel like this event in itself, a lot of people are acting like they dropped the ball and it's like, oh, back to PlayStation, but come on. Let's give them, here's the positivity. Here's me looking on the bright side. Let's give them a second here. It was all cinematic trailers. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to get negative. <laughs> this part was actually super cool. I will say this is by far the best part of the entire event. Whatever is happening here, I want every single part of it. And I can't wait for that game. I'm not even big on FPSs, but this looks like a weird hybrid of like Sekiro and I, I, FPS, Call of Duty. I don't know what's going on, but I want to be a part of it. This actually looked really good. Uh, but that aside, it was like all cinematic. And this is what I don't get when, when companies, whether it's Microsoft or Sony, or Square or Nintendo, it doesn't matter. Whenever these companies put on an event, hype up an event, and then all they show, all they come out with is cinematic track. I don't get that because it's 2020. We all know at this point, a cinematic trailer doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean deadly squat, squit, squit, squat. Squ squ who here has seen the most incredible, amazing, epic, awe-inspiring cinematic trailer 
and then it turned out to be a mobile game. Now, here's what I'll say. Here's me looking on the bright side for this whole event. Since it was all cinematic trailers and they were all pretty doomy and gloomy trailers too. Like all these like dark, washed out cinematic trailers. The fact that Scarlet Nexus isn't a sequel to Astral Chain is confusing me. What is Scarlet Nexus? I actually didn't see this when I skimmed through... Skim... Yeah, I skimmed through the Microsoft... I, all right. <laughs> People behind the Tales series. Oh. Oh, okay. How is this not a weird sequel? This looks so much like Astral Chain, it's not funny. It looks awesome. Like, this game... It by far is the coolest looking thing from the event and I don't know how I've missed it until now. Why is nobody talking about this? Oh, and then Yakuza at the end. All right, well, this event was pretty good. <laughs> so let's just get, let, I know, I know, I know, I know, but let's just give Microsoft a few moments here to catch up with themselves. Let's just give them a little bit to see if we get something else before the system comes out. And hey, that might even end up being before we see the freaking PlayStation 5 console itself all right okay all right <laughs> positivity <laughs> uh last of us two you know what i'm not even gonna talk about it what i'll say I'll, I'll say my end point which is that um the game isn't out yet let's wait till the game is out let's wait till you've played it before you talk about it until the game is out let's just <laughs> smile on our dials animal Crossing! <laughs> Animal Crossing is the game that won't go away, <laughs> which is great. I love it. I have, I do really love it. I want to show you guys something which I found uh, two days ago. Animal freaking Crossing. All right. So usually games, they 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 kind of get like a bump, but when they get announced, it's a small bump. But when they come out, they get this huge spike, which you can see over here. But then they almost immediately, within like the first week, drop. We are like over a month of this thing's release. And at the month point, it actually started to curve. And the interest in this game, people Googling this game, talking about this game, whatever, on the internet, started to go back up a little bit. Like it's hanging in there to compare. And I made a joke about this in the video recently about how... Final Fantasy 7, everyone was ranting and raving about it for like five years and the game came out and like no one seemed to care or like it just died off in a couple of weeks. That is insane to me. Even if you put in like FF7 Remake, like that bump of the, it's so minuscule, not only compared to Animal Crossing, but like it's just, it was just over before it began. I'm not trying to downplay Final Fantasy 7. I played it. I loved it. I adored it. But people are still going with Animal Crossing. It's crazy. The sales are at like 14 million and they were at like 11 million within the first something like seven or the first week or something like that. To put that into perspective, Breath of the Wild, which has been out since the console has existed, only has like 17, only has like 17 million sales. The Switch has been sold out since Animal Crossing came out. And I think that and part is a lot of people reselling it and scalping it. The price of the Switch is like jacked up by like double. Everyone's stuck at home and you know, now is the time to buy a Switch. Even though it's a portable console, now is the time to buy a Switch because you're stuck at home. This drive and this love for Animal Crossing is crazy. Also something I find pretty funny. Why are you not going, what? Let's go back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so Washington, that's where it's most searched. People in Washington love Animal Crossing. But what I think is so cute, Hawaii is number two. People in Hawaii are over there living the actual island dream. And they're trying to get their grubby little hands all, <laughs> all over Animal Crossing to play it and, and live a fantasy island life. I love that. I love it. All right, that was that. What did I have next? Okay, uh, here's just a weird little fun thing for you to explore on your own in your own time. But I will bring it up and show you because what else am I doing with my life right now? Prince of Persia. I know everyone's heard about this, but I actually only really heard about it today. For the last eight years, there has been leaked footage of a Prince of Persia game sat on YouTube and nobody has cared, nobody noticed, nobody knew, 
and then I guess someone found it. This is real gameplay of a would have been Prince of Persia game from 10 years ago. Instantly took me back to playing like Two Thrones, Sands of Time, and those Prince of Persia games manipulating time. So cool. And this game kind of looks like a really interesting blend of the Prince of Persia I knew and kind of like the Batman style combat. Anyway, check it out in your own time. Really cool. I was thinking about Prince of Persia a couple of weeks ago, funny enough, because I went on this whole, do you ever start going down a rabbit hole? I know you, I know everyone does. Why am I saying it? I started going down a rabbit hole on the internet and my specific rabbit hole this one day was Ubisoft. Has anyone else realized that almost every game that Ubisoft has been working on or said they were working on has either completely disappeared or they haven't talked about it in months to years or they've just been indefinitely delayed? I don't know what is going on at Ubisoft, but I'll show you what I mean. Even when you go to upcoming Ubisoft games, which I had, didn't see the store before, and see what they say is coming, what they have on the pipeline. This is what they're choosing to promote for upcoming games. Gods and Monsters, which is one that I want to say, what happened to that? Gods and Monsters, you, could, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't even find a wiki for that game. All I could find was like the fandom wikis. And there's barely anything on there for it. Like we don't really know anything about this game, but it was supposed to come out in February on Switch and everywhere else, and that just didn't happen. And this is all we know about it. Watch Dogs, which also just got delayed. Where is Watch Dog Legion? Which is like the first thing that came up when I, when I Googled that. Okay, so this game was initially supposed to come out March 6, 2020. And then in October of last year, they announced that instead it was going to be delayed till the physical year of 2021. Then it was announced it was going to come out on the next generation of consoles. So a game that was already supposed to be out is now only not coming out till next gen. And that was before this whole Corona. This is all of this, by the way, is before the coronavirus started messing things up. This is literally all cancellations and pushbacks before coronavirus was in play. And again, one game like this being pushed back is something, but like all of their games are getting pushed back. And then they announced Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which fine, I'm sure that that is their main focus right now and it is coming out, but that's what they're showing here. But then you have to start thinking about Beyond Good and Evil. So this was announced E3 2017, and it has no release window. Then you start thinking about Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones was a Ubisoft game. They announced uh, 2017. I've been really excited for this one. Originally set to release 2018. Then it was delayed to 2019. Then again to 2020. And then on a call with investors in October 19, confirmed the game had been pushed back to at least April 2021 to March 2022. <laughs> to expect it out every year after that tells me that in 2017 when they announced it and I we saw gameplay, it looked like it was getting there and they thought it was getting there for the year after, then the year after, then the year after, then the year after. Then the year <laughs> I don't I'm on an absolute Ubisoft rant now. This is literally the, the rabbit hole I went down. But here's here's the, here's the thing that I find the craziest out of all of this. Ubisoft is such a large company. They have so many different branches. What are they working? Like, why all these delays? Because all the games I just mentioned, they have been announced over the last like four years. But then you look at everything else that actually has a set date. The only thing I can really see taking a lot of time here is the Tom Clancy game and the Assassin's Creed, which they just announced. Like, why are they announcing that when they haven't even... That was a fun tangent we went on. I wonder how much of that I had to cut out of the edit. <laughs> and then I, I guess the last thing I was going to talk about, which... I'll keep really brief, it's just the state of Nintendo right now. Because I feel like this year has just... It's not shaped up the way anyone thought for anything, obviously. We're in like May and uh... What's going on? <laughs> I would think this year is the year to capitalize and like really be pushing things hard. And luckily Animal Crossing blew away with expectations, but I hope we get some more surprises going late into this year. I feel like, I feel like Nintendo had this year planned in their heads. And I think things that were planned for this year were things like Metroid and Bayonetta, 
uh, maybe even Pikmin. And I think all three of those things clearly aren't shaping up the way they thought. I think there's still a chance we might get Bayonetta. I don't know what's happening, obviously. None of us do with games like Metroid, but uh, you would think from when they were announced to Nintendo's typical announcing things to releasing things window, this seems like the year. And I feel like that was the plan, but Metroid fell short and they had to redo it. Bayonetta seems to be lost to the echoes of space and time right now, much like all the Ubisoft games. I hope Nintendo at least drops some kind of Metroid Prime trilogy this year to hold over the Metroid fans. But we all just have to be incredibly patient right now. While we can question a lot of things, a lot of other things are completely out of our control and out of these companies' control. And I think just... It, we're all stuck at home going a little stir crazy and it's so easy to just start looking on the negative side of things and getting bogged down and being bored and wanting things now or just you know just going a little a little bit cuckoo up in the <laughs> it's just a matter of waiting and being patient but let's not get all upset and angry just yet let's just wait let's just wait things out i i hate how often i have to tell people that all right guys if you like this kind of video i will do it again i hope you're all feeling great and amazing and positive and ready to to spread some positivity out into the world into the internet i hope you're well and healthy and happy bye <laughs> i didn't know how to end the video